Hey guys, Merry Christmas. It is the last day of Vlogmas and so I thought I would end Vlogmas with a Q&A and so I asked for some questions on Facebook and this is what we got. So let's get started. Um, okay, first question, when do we get the pizza dough recipe? Okay, I'm going to just put the recipe in the um, description box below real quick and I promise you I will get the video done sometime in January but we... Um, I had it recorded and I had it all ready to go on my computer, like all the video clips, and then my, that computer got soaked. Um, I, I shared the whole saga on my Instagram stories a couple of months ago, so I haven't re-recorded it yet. So I will do that eventually, but I'll put the recipe below for those of you who are familiar with working with yeast and dough, um, you can follow along on the recipe. Um, and then also, thoughts on college. Are you a follow your dreams mom or a follow your dreams after you get your degree mom? Well, um, I am a, I definitely love the idea of a gap year, but I also know that I can't tell my kids what to do. Um, I can only encourage them with what I think is right. Um, I think that the way John and I talk to them, we are not like career minded when we talk to them about their futures. We always talk about, you know, when they, one day when you grow up and you get married or when you have kids or with your family and all that, we really um, build up the idea of family and that being what's worth the future rather than their career. Of course we want them to have good jobs and, and an education if that's what they want, but at the end of the day we just want to encourage them that whatever job they do vocation career whatever it is during the day that their lives are being lived for others and not for their raising them to be the man or woman they're going to be when they walk through the door at the end of their job rather than what their job's going to be. and whatever they do whether they want to be a mechanic whether they want to be a UPS driver whether they want to be a veterinarian or a doctor we just hope that it's where the Lord led them and that their family comes first and that their um, their heart is for others in the process. Okay, how do you handle sibling fights? Not well. Um, I think it go, we go back and forth with which set of siblings are fighting more, but right now it happens to be the boys most often, um, which is a bummer because they share a room. Um, and so there's just a lot of separation and a lot of talk about um, is your brother more important than your stuff? Or, you know, if, do we need to get rid of the stuff if that's becoming more important than your brother and things along those lines? Do I attend a co-op? No, I do not attend a co-op. Um, I have attended many co-ops. My kids do participate in one program um, here in town, but it's a drop-off program and it's one morning a week. It's not a co-op. I do not need to be involved. I just felt like co-ops were taking a lot of my time um, when I barely had enough time to homeschool within our home, let alone prepare lessons for a whole nother group. Um, but I do meet once a week with one of my girlfriends and her kids, we're very close, we've been close for a very long time, so it's a very relaxed environment, and we meet once a week and each of us take a week on who is um, doing the project for Story of the World. It's very informal, it's like, okay, so we read chapter 33 this week, okay, well, we're gonna make this recipe, so make sure that they don't eat lunch before they come over, very, very simple. How often do you get outside for nature, study, or playtime? My kids spend hours outside every day. I, I mean, every day they're outside unless it's raining. Um, in the summertime we have a pool, so they're out in the pool. In the wintertime they're outside all day. We do school outside. We love being outside, um, especially in the evening time. It's Florida, so it's very warm, but they do go outside almost every day for a few hours, and they're outside every morning for quite some time. Um, that being said, it's not always a guided nature study. We just do nature study one day a week. Do I, okay, do you do tea time every day? No, we don't do poetry tea time every day, but I did just start considering doing an afternoon tea. So we're, we do our morning basket in the morning, and I like the idea of doing our read aloud as a tea time at the end of every school afternoon. I used to just have them pull out their mats and blankets, and I would read to them at the end of the day, turn all the lights down, it was very comfortable, but I think that I might, um, add a little easy popcorn and tea, tea time snack every day and just make it like a gather around the table kind of a time. I think that would be fun. Does it ever get crazy loud and how do you handle it? It always seems so quiet in your videos. It is so loud in my house sometimes that I am just like, if you guys do not quiet down, mommy is going to have a heart attack and that's probably not doing anything good for them. They're probably getting anxious about it. But 
I don't handle noise well, so I, I kind of deal with that in a couple of ways. One, I don't, we don't ever have the TV on, especially as background noise. It's a very rare, except for a family movie night, that the TV's on. Um, we don't really have any radios in the house. We don't have a lot of noise besides soft hymns, usually playing on Pandora. Um, and if the TV's on, it's not on with people talking. If they're watching a movie, they're watching a movie. If they're not watching it, I turn it off if they're wanting to talk. Um, we do talk about respecting the environment a lot, so they're allowed to be noisy in the house if it's an appropriate time, but if the baby's napping or we're doing school or somebody needs some rest or mommy has a headache, we need to respect the environment. That's less of like an inside voice, outside voice type of thing because sometimes it's okay to yell inside the house um, if they're having fun or playing a game, but I just, they need to know to respect the environment that um, is necessary at that moment. The next one says, I have two very different questions. How did you come up with your kids' names? Oh my gosh, I love the story behind each of my kids' names. I think I will do a video, one of those like 10 baby names that we love but won't be using kind of a thing because for each of our kids we have a boy's name and a girl's name and we kind of like retire, the like so if we had, if that baby was a girl then we kind of like retire the boy's name and we never use the boy's name. Um, so. I tell my kids what that name would have been if they would have been a boy or a girl, and I wonder if any of them will use them for their kids. I don't know. It's just it, there's a story behind each pregnancy. There's a story behind each um, prayer for each child that we were having, and there's so there's an appropriate, you know, male and female name for each of them. Um, so we never felt like using a, the same name again. So you know what? I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do a video on how I came up with their names because they all have a very good story behind them. Um, and I promise you I will do that video within, before January 1st. I will do that video before January 1st. Um, okay, where's the questions at? Okay, and then the second question on that was, I was watching an old curriculum video of yours and you mentioned the Prairie Primer, Prairie Primer, and what you use, that I've used it in a couple years. Okay. Um, I have not started using it yet, but my kids are loving Little House, the Little House series, and so, I am I'm thinking about doing it two ways. One, uh, obviously during this Christmas break, I'm going to take some time to reevaluate like I do every year before we start our second semester and see what's working, what's not working. And I may kind of like push the, our prairie unit a little harder than I'm pushing our history unit. Um, if that's the case, then we will pick up prairie primer. If not, then we will be doing, when we finish the Little House series, hopefully before the end of the school year, we'll be doing a lot of the projects in the summertime. So I'm not sure which, which route we're going to take yet, but we will be using it at some point in this upcoming calendar year. And then there's a couple more questions here. Okay, or maybe just one more. How do I organize my kids' room? How do I organize my kids' room? I do have something to say about this because... I, I, a lot of times when I get questions, I'm like, I'm no expert, I don't know what to say, but I, I do have a system that really, really works for us for the kids' room. Um, one, I don't fold laundry for them. I know that sounds crazy, but more than anything, I just like lay their things flat in a bin um, because folding it does no good when they tear through it. Anyway, it's much easier at their ages to lay the laundry down than to fold it and refold it. And there's a lot of them in my house, and so I need them to be able to just get a basket of laundry that I've pre-sorted and have them lay it in the appropriate places. Of Obviously, Annabeth can't do it, but even Eli now, four, is able to do that. The other thing is, until Bella just got a dresser, we usually don't use a dresser for them. What we always use are those like storage cubicle things, like you can find them at Target or Walmart. They're like 12-inch bins. And I, until they can read, just draw a picture, like a picture of underwear or a picture of pajamas or a picture of a t-shirt, like on the outsides of their um, bins. And then they can just pick up a shirt and put it in a shirt bin. Pick up, you know, undies, put it in undies bin. Um, obviously, Bella's old enough now to where I don't need to, like, have tacky stickers outside of her drawers. She now knows this is my drawer for my shirts and my pants, whatever. Um, although she did admit to me the other day, we were having like kind of a goofy moment. She's like, "Mommy, I have to tell you something. Whenever I fold my laundry, I only put the, I only lay flat what's on top. The rest of it I just put in there, which is really funny." And I was like, "Oh, I don't know how I feel about that, but whatever." So um, most of their clothing is cotton shirts and jeans, or you know, swimsuits or whatever. 
Um, I hang up their hang up clothes. There is a, I have a bar in our laundry room that I just hang it right out of the dryer or right out of the washer and that's easy to just go in their closet. So their laundry is pretty simple. It's mine and John's laundry that I never get around to because I don't know. I really hate folding clothes and our clothes are too big to lay flat in the drawer. Um, the rest of their room, we only allow each of them to have one thing in their room. So Bella has her American Girls, which takes up an entire closet. But that's, you know, she doesn't have American Girls, Legos, Calico Critters, everything in her room. It's just too much stuff in the room. Everything else is a community toy in the playroom. So she has her American Girls in her room. Jesse has his Legos. Well, he did have his Legos. We actually just confiscated those because they were getting everywhere. So now he has superheroes in his room. Eli also has superheroes in his room, whatever goes along with that. They have a cubicle in those bins for their superheroes. And they also all keep their stuffed animals in the room. So it's just stuffed animals and American Girl in Bella's room, and stuffed animals and superheroes in the boys' room. It was stuffed animals and Legos, stuffed animals and superheroes. But that keeps all the clutter and all the junk from building up in their rooms, and it generally stays very clean. And I have them do a little pickup with their morning contributions, their evening contributions, and then on Sundays we go through and do a good solid deep clean. You know, if any shop canes or Barbie shoes have found their way into their rooms along their baseboard, we go in Sunday and we reset the room. Sometimes they like to set up, like, you know, Bella wants to set up a veterinarian shop in her room. It's not fair for her to break it down twice a day if it's taking her a while to set it up. So I leave room for creativity there not too hard on them about that but on Sundays we reset the house for the next week so on Sundays yeah the whole vet shop's coming down she can reset it if she wants to but I just gotta know that those back corners of my house are clean and fresh so those are all your questions for me and I have a question for you I want to know what your favorite Christmas memory is ever from when you were a child from when you've had kids whatever I want to know what your favorite Christmas memory is Merry Christmas guys and I will see you really soon. Bye.